Hi friends, my name is Al or Lowell Starnard. Welcome to another video. Today, we are accomplishing a milestone. You probably cannot see anything except for pink, but this is the sketch to a self-portrait. Before we do get started, I wanna thank my patrons. Your names are on screen. I love you guys so much. Seriously, thank you so much for being a patron. If you're not a patron, check it out. Consider becoming one. We have a lot of fun over there. We do fun, exclusive stuff every month, like a video, a podcast, postcard, sticker, and more. So please consider. Anyways, the reason I've done so many self-portraits before, this one is significant though. I had an art teacher who like somewhat became my mentor. And at one point she told me like, one day you're gonna have to do like a self-portrait. She had just done a self-portrait for herself. She's like, you're gonna have to do an artist self-portrait, like a legit fancy self-portrait. And ever since that day, I have ruminated on that and thought like, well, what would mine be? Like, I don't know. Like, I don't, for a long time, I didn't like the way I looked and I did like, I didn't know how to do that and be comfortable with it. What did it mean to have a professional self-portrait, an artist self-portrait? And I always thought like, I am, I'm probably just never gonna even reach that point of needing one or like when it is time, I'll know. And I think it's time for my first iteration of my professional artist self-portrait. I, I don't know why it's time, but it feels time. I want something to kind of commemorate this time in my life as a professional artist. And so that's what we're doing today. This is going to be in oils. I've already got the sketch done. I sat down and I like went outside. It was disgustingly hot. It took forever. It was very difficult, but I took some nice pictures of myself to use as reference. I picked my favorite. I copied the sketch over uh, and I've done the underpainting. I decided to go with pink because I feel like that's representative of me and my art right now. And now all that's left to be done is the painting. The thing is, is I've honestly been very busy lately and I haven't always had a lot of energy to devote to artwork. Shocker, right? But my deadline is already coming up for this project, like to have the video out in time. I don't wanna rush this painting. I'm a fast painter. It usually only takes me a few days to work on any particular project, but this is something that I want to truly take my time on. I don't wanna paint on days that I don't feel like painting. I don't wanna, you know, be counting down. I think I only need one more day to finish this. Like I want to take my time with it. I wanna be genuinely really proud of this and I want to enjoy the process. So I'm thinking this might end up being like a two part, like a, a part video, like this might be part one. I normally don't like doing this, but as I do paintings that are like bigger and more, they require more work and they're more intricate. I think this is just something that's gonna have to happen on my channel. Even though it's not what I want to do in an ideal world, that's probably what's gonna have to happen, so I better get used to it. So this might be, I, I honestly have no idea. Obviously I haven't even started yet, so I don't know how it's gonna go, but this might be a part one. You might not see the end of this video. Maybe you will if things go really well, but we'll see. All I know right now is that I'm really excited. I like it so far. Um, I have some new oil paint tubes that I haven't used. Like I bought them forever ago. They're not new anymore, but I've never used them before. I'm really excited. I'm gonna use them on this painting. And um, I think it's gonna be fun and cool and great. So grab something to work on, strap yourselves in, and let's get to painting. Let's go. Hi, future Al. I want to take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, Anna Luisa, who I've worked with many, many times before, and I really love them. In case you weren't aware, it's November, which means it's holiday season. It's time to start looking for gifts. In my self-portrait, I will be including my Anna Luisa earrings because I wear them literally every single day. I've got them in right now, the little squiggly ones. They're a staple, my all-time favorites. I love Anna Luisa a lot, and that's why I got some jewelry for my best friend. I'm wearing some right now, but don't worry, Hannah. I'm gonna clean them before I give them to you. If you want to do some holiday shopping, whether you want to get yourself something or you want to look for something for friends, there will be a link down below. So make sure you go check that out and keep an eye out for their holiday sales. You can get up to 30% off. So make sure you watch out for that. These are all for my best friend. I picked out a few earrings that I thought really reminded me of her. She lives back in Virginia, so she's really far away. So I'm really, really excited to get to send this to her and let her know that, you know, she's in my thoughts. And I think that's one thing that's really great about jewelry because now whenever she wears these, she can think of me and that makes me really happy. Not only is Anna Luisa affordable, it's really, really high quality, but they're also sustainable. It's got everything you're really looking for in a good gift. 
Their jewelry is beautiful, it's classy, and they have so many different styles to suit whoever you might be shopping for. Frankly, I'm not always great at gift giving. I think jewelry is just a great option. I think it just is meaningful and thoughtful, and especially with Anna Louise's jewelry, I know that she's gonna love whatever I give her. I'm not gonna try on all of these earrings for you because again, they're not mine, they're not for me, but I am so excited to send these to my best friend. I know she's gonna love them. So make sure you check out that link down below so you can start shopping for your loved ones and get them something really beautiful and special and meaningful. Thank you so much to Annalisa for sponsoring, for continuing to support my channel, and for giving me some great gift ideas. Now let's get into the painting. Let me start by talking about my thought process behind like the self-portrait itself. I've talked about this before, but like, I don't love using myself as a subject and stuff because people can kind of like, like find meaning in that art, right? Like obviously. And as for like my general art, that's great. I love that. I have no issue with people finding their own interpretations and, and reading into my art. I think it's wonderful. But when like I am the subject, it can be kind of uncomfortable, you know? It can be weird to have people read into who I am or my relationship with myself when it's not something that's true or it's not something that I wanted to communicate. Like I really have been loving the idea of doing darker art or, you know, interesting stuff playing with horror themes. I've been really into that, like horror elements. Uh, but also in general, I'm a very happy person. I'm very happy with myself and what I look like. So it genuinely makes me uncomfortable to think that people would look at that weird art that it probably only features myself out of convenience because I don't have another model. And they might read into it and be like, wow, like she hates herself or, you know, she thinks she's ugly or this, she's fighting, with, you know what I mean? Like, it's just weird and uncomfortable to think that people might look at my art and interpret something about me. Like if they're like, oh, I mirror this in myself, like that's one thing, but I've, I, cause that happens where I posted, posted stuff and people think that it's me talking about myself and that can just be weird. So when it came to my actual self portrait, I knew that I had to be careful and make sure that I was really communicating what I wanted to communicate. Cause that's the point basically. I was thinking about, you know, other people's self portraits, how they often tell a story about the artist. They're obviously representing themselves. You know, generally these aren't, they're not boring professional headshots, you know, there's something there whether it's in the intentions, the process, the subject matter, whatever. And I wasn't super concerned about making something that would be like super in depth or a masterpiece or would bear my soul to the world. I really did wanna focus on, you know, just making a nice painting of myself and making it look good. I didn't need it to be super intricate or have a lot of props or stuff going on. I was thinking about what I would want to communicate about myself, how I wanna represent myself, what part of myself I would want to shine through. But honestly, like I couldn't think of anything. You know what I mean? I think back to when I was in college and I was very depressed and it would have been something so, so silly. You know, there, there's plenty of things that I could have come up with then. But now there's no like message about myself that I want to make sure everyone knows. When I was thinking like, what do I want people to see? What do I think is a major part of myself? My go-to, like the only thing I can really think of is my happiness, you know what I mean? I think that is like a major part of my life right now. It's just how content I am and how happy I feel with myself and in my life and just in general. And that was the only thing that I could really see trying to include in this painting. But I did want it to be interesting, like visually interesting still. I didn't want it to just be like a boring headshot of myself, right? I thought about a lot of different ways I could do it, maybe a bit more old fashioned kind of inspired paintings, a dark background, maybe I could hold like flowers. I also thought about holding my dog, but there's no way she would go be down for that. But all of that felt really boring or even just like too difficult to set up. Like I don't have a black backdrop. But then I thought about the previous self portrait I had done in the mirror in a sketchbook very recently. And I was like, oh my God, I should just do that again. I really, really enjoyed doing that. I just love mirrors and the idea of reflections and all that, you know, the interaction of light and yourself and whatever, specifically in art. Like I really love that motif. I thought that would be a really like fun element to add to this painting without, and I felt, felt like it would kind of add some hint of meaning without me really having to like think too hard. You know what I mean? So I found this huge heavy old mirror in my grandma's house 
I took it and my camera outside in the backyard and I started just taking pictures. And oh my God, it was awful. It was truly, it was a horrible, it was a fun, but it was a horrible experience. I was sweating so much. It was very hard work. That mirror was so stupid heavy. And for what? I don't, I literally don't know why it was so heavy. I had my camera set up on a timer. There is a way that I can like set it up to control it with my phone, but it, it does need internet and it disconnects very easily. So I just figured like I wouldn't even bother doing that outside where my internet connection isn't great. So, you know, I had to frame the shot, do a couple of test shots just to make sure my idea would work. I originally had an idea of laying down and kind of getting the sky, like the sky in it too. So I was doing a few test shots, seeing what I could physically do. I couldn't lay on the ground. Um, so I would just kind of sit there. I tried to frame it. I couldn't really see. I had to just hope everything was focused properly and in frame, press the button, sit down, and then like get the mirror up as quickly as possible and then just pose and try not to look super sweaty and disgusting. Then, you know, I had to try and see if the picture turned out well, which I really couldn't tell because it was so bright outside. And I tried, once I sat down, I tried not to move. I tried to like see it from where I, like look at the camera from where I was sitting. So it was, it was all an ordeal. So I just did that over and over again until I felt like I, at least, you know, of like the 200 pictures I took, there's gotta be a few in there that are worth it, right? Thankfully, I actually ended up taking quite a few pictures that I really liked. It had taken me a while to figure out what I wanted the photos to look like. Like there was a learning curve in taking these photos. And I, it was also like, what do I want to convey? Like the pose, like, what do I want to convey? Like I knew I wanted to be smiling. I knew I wanted to be happy. Um, and I knew I wanted a pretty background, obviously. But I was also like limited to what was available in my backyard and had good lighting. But it ended up being really perfect. Despite me have no, having no idea how it would turn out, it ended up being really, really perfect. Like there's the green leaves sprouting up like behind and around me. The way the sun hits was really nice. So I had a lot of, a, like a lot of photos to sort through and it basically came down to picking which pose looked nicest. And I finally settled on one photo that I was drawn to the most. And I feel really happy with the decision that I went with. I think it's exactly what I wanted. It feels happy and sunny and comfortable and me, but also there's visual interest. And I think the mirror does add that element of like, wow, maybe there is some deep message. You know what I mean? But I'm also like not worried about anyone looking at it and ascribing some sort of weird or overly deep or dark or sad meaning to it. So I think it's a really happy medium. So now that we've discussed that, we've got that covered, let's talk about the process so far, because obviously I have not finished the painting yet. As I said in the beginning, I really didn't want to rush this whole process, this painting. This was actually a bit of a difficult decision for me, which sounds silly, but um, I'm big on like, I want all the art in my videos to be worth your time, right? If you're gonna give me 20, 30, sometimes like 40 minutes of your time, I want it to be worth it for you. I want the art to provide some sort of value. Doesn't mean that the art is good, but I don't wanna waste your time with a dumb doodle. I wanna create complete pieces to share with you. The idea of doing just part of a piece and making a whole video of just that, where you only see part of a painting and there's no real quote unquote payoff in the end, it was weirdly scary to me. But this coming year, I really wanna start dedicating more time to large original pieces like this. So I think like it's something that I'm just gonna have to get used to, you know? I, I hope you guys don't mind and still find the video like fully entertaining and worthwhile. I think in some ways it could be good. Like you're gonna be able to get to see more detail and much more of the process in depth rather than a few seconds here, a few seconds there, you know? So anyways, I knew I wanted to use oil paints for this like from the get go. I think the more I use them, the more I love them, and the more I see them as an easier medium, they're still a hassle, they're still a pain in the ass, too many steps, very confusing, but the medium itself, the process itself, it's becoming easier and easier, especially for larger pieces like this. And I can also say now that I'm like into the painting, I really wish I had used a different material than canvas. Like on camera, I think on the like video it might be fine, but I'm trying to take progress photos on my phone and it really picks up the canvas texture and it looks so ugly. It's so annoying. Like it looks bad. 
I wish I had used some sort of wood board or just something smooth. Um, I much prefer painting on those kinds of surfaces, but you know, I had a canvas on hand already, the proper size and you know, wood material can be like really expensive to buy um, and like prepare and whatever. So yeah, I was gonna use canvas no matter what, but I would love maybe in the future to try different materials, <laughs> maybe. Although I do have canvas I need to use up. But yeah, anyways, I knew I wanted to use oils for just the beautiful blending and colors. I've talked about this before, but a huge issue that I've had with oils is getting the right colors. I've really been struggling in particular with like my reds. I, I can't remember, like, especially this was very prominent in my Zorn painting a while ago, but everything was turning out way too pink from putting, mixing white and red or too yellow. And I couldn't get these like really nice orangey reds or light reds, which like is pink, but there's a difference. Like I was looking for like a lighter red, but I kept getting these like really soft pinks. And it was really, really frustrating. But I got this tube of pink paint a while ago and that has really changed the game. Like it's, so, it's oh my God, I love it. Having that pink to lighten the red instead of white has really allowed me to keep the impact and oomph of the red. Like it's still red, but it's lighter. You know what I'm saying? It, like the pink instead of the white, it's, it's, I don't know. It's just such a difference and it's so amazing. And I found that mixing like the pink and the yellow creates this beautiful, beautiful skin tone, like this beautiful peachy color instead of it being like very, very orange, but also it can be orange the more you, oh my God, it's just, Adding this pink has really helped flesh out. It's changed the game. And I think it's definitely gonna be a staple for me. I mean, it's, it's really like beefed up my light skin tones. It's just, it's amazing. Honestly, so far, the whole process has been shockingly easy, like almost too easy. For some reason, I thought I would go straight in. Like I, I don't know what overcame me, but I was like, let me just go straight in with a small brush and I'm just gonna start at 100. I'm going to start doing detail instead of my usual method where I use kind of a larger square brush and I do like a first less detailed layer, you know, like I just try to get the, the canvas covered and then I go back in and start doing the minutia. I, I don't know why, I just felt compelled to use the small brush and start there. And right away, it was working so well. I think it, I don't know if it takes more time. I mean, this painting specifically, it is going by really, really fast. But I think normally my thought process is that it's just, it takes too long to go 100% detail right from the beginning. And of course, like I can't get as much detail as I want right away. Like it's gonna take a second layer, but I think, you know, I usually need multiple layers when I do my other methods. So I don't know. I don't know what's just saving more time. But yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to go back as, but yeah, I definitely couldn't get exactly as much detail as I needed in every spot. So I will definitely have to go back with a second layer. Once it's dry, add those darker spots, lines, eyelashes, highlights, stuff like that, that could get lost in the wet paint. And there are definitely things that are also just like wrong. Like, um, like I can look at my face and I can see that there's like the smile lines. I'm missing a lot of saturation and, um, and value. Like stuff will need to be tweaked for sure. But overall, I've been going from area to area and mostly, mostly like fully painting it at, at one time. And it's been working really well and I'm moving like very fast. For a second there in the beginning, I was like, huh, I might actually be able to like finish this painting in time. But of course, then there were the days um, that I woke up and I was like, yeah, I do not feel like painting today. So even though when I was painting, I was moving really fast and I was getting lots of work done at once, I still wasn't making like leaps and bounds of progress overall. But it was really encouraging to see it coming together so wonderfully and beautifully so quickly. It's really got me excited about how this might all come together in the end. And it makes me just very motivated to keep working and hopefully keep up a good pace. However, I am a little worried that now that I have what's needed for the video, I will lose all that motivation to continue the painting especially because I don't have a publishing date for part two in mind, but hopefully just the excitement of how good it's looking will be, uh, will be enough, <laughs> we'll see. I thought about doing more than two parts um, and just kind of as I paint uploading videos, but honestly, I think the rest of the painting is all kind of the uninteresting bits, you know? It kind of worked out perfectly that I had to do the two parts in the first place 
because I got to do like a whole video basically dedicated to like what I find, like what I try to dedicate the most time to. I find it to be the most interesting part. So we got way more time dedicated to a more in-depth look at, you know, the eyes, face, skin tone, stuff like that. But that means that the rest of the painting is just fabric, hair, blurry greenery. Um, so I think all of that, like the boring stuff, right? So I think all of that, and then of course, like the, the last layer of final details will come together for like a nice finishing second part to this. I don't know if that stuff would be interesting on its own to have more than one more part. Here we are at the end of this video. Obviously not the end of the painting. We have ended at a, honestly a very unflattering, <laughs> unflattering spot, but that's fine. Um, there's definitely some spots that are like definitely need reworking. Uh, in my cheeks, like kind of like my smile lines are really lacking a lot of depth and uh, like a, a lot of detail needs to be added. I've, obviously I could only do so much with the wet on wet. So a lot of stuff needs to be added to what's done. Like the hand is just missing so much detail, but there's a lot that I really love. There's a lot that I'm really, really, really liking. I love the green reflections in the hand and the palm. I think that it's so juicy, so yummy. Same thing with up on my nose. I don't really love it on the cheek. I think that needs a little bit of shaping in a way, but I, I really, really like the colors. I think it's looking really good. I think it looks like me and I think it could be a lot worse. <laughs> I think it looks good, I'm really happy with it. Oh my God, there's a dog hair, get out. I do wish a bit more was done for this video, but as I said at the beginning, I really, really don't wanna rush this piece. This piece is very important to me, very precious to me, and I wanna treat it that way. So I'm taking my time, but that's it. I've talked a lot in the voiceover, so I'm not gonna talk, I don't have much more to say. You know, it's not a finished painting. When it's when it's complete, I'm sure I'll have plenty to talk about. So I'm gonna leave you here for now. Uh, thank you, Anna Luisa, for sponsoring. Make sure you check them out. The link is in the description down below. Love, Anna Luisa. If you like the video, like, comment, subscribe, the whole shebang, you know what to do. Go get some nice gifts, maybe some jewelry for yourself. Go have some food and go do some art. Bye. I'll see you next time when this painting is complete. <laughs> no, I'll see you sooner than that. Bye.